I'm here with Dean Offord and we're going to cover the latest BTZ developments. So, uh, starting with, with key highlights, what has, what's happened over the last year then? It's been a really good year for Panasonic BTZ. We've had some amazing case studies come out. As you know, we have a very, very expansive range. So from our small PTZ, so entry level, mid-level up to specialized level, every user is adopting PTZ in different ways. And some of the key highlights that we had in terms of case studies, uh, innovations in auto tracking. We had 63 UE70s being used in Cisco Live. In the how, are they, how are they using them? So they had uh, multiple conference rooms and they had different seminars happening and the trouble is with BTZ as well, sometimes you just don't have enough operators. So to have a centralized platform where you can run the software and start tracking multiple cameras at the same time saves a lot of time on installation cost and also uh, resources of trying to locate those operators. So they really benefited from having that centralized automated system. I really feel that as we're heading more into the future and we're showing from Panasonic different live automation systems. This is going to be the way and PTZ are at the forefront of doing that. Another really good highlight is uh, the success of the UB150. We've had a really strong launch. Lots of rental companies are adopting them. It's 4K 60p. Uh, even now today we have Vlog implemented into it so it's being used in production purposes. And from the rental companies that we're speaking to, they're out the door all the time. So it's, it's really good to hear. But we're seeing them in all sorts of places, even the UEFA Champions League when they're walking down, going into the pitch. For tunnel, tunnel cam, wasn't it? Tunnel cam, yeah. yeah. So it's really nice, discreet, great quality. And what about the Gothenburg Symphony installation? How, yeah. how was that? Gothenburg was really great. So it was starting to combine the UE150s in a theatre setting and also using the uh, Panapod. So the Panapod system is being able to elevate them. Yeah, yeah. Another thing about PTZ is when you have them fixed in an installation, it's creating that dynamic movements. And you can really, really change up your shots of PTZ. You're very limited in one fixed position, but having one operator being able to remotely control them, now with the Panapod innovations of having them being controlled over IP, again, that centralized system, we're really at the forefront of doing it. Nice. So. This year marks the 10-year anniversary since the first PTZ from Panasonic, of course, the HG100. Yeah. So what would you consider to be the most groundbreaking innovation, I suppose, that you've, you would, you would see, you've seen this year? Yeah, so it's been really amazing since then, you know, over the decade, pretty much, for PTZs. Yeah, yeah. The HG100 was, uh, in some cases, still being used, which is amazing. It's a testament to the ergonomics of the product. Uh, for me, I think the UB150 naturally has just been amazing. It's the first PTZ with uh, 12G out the back, fiber support, um, simultaneous output, which is amazing. Uh, but also NDI innovations. So NDI HX in our products, I think, as a manufacturer in our PTZ 9-up, we have su the most amount of PTZs probably supporting NDI HX because it's really accessible. So what do you see as being the key benefit of NDI then? NDI single cable workflow. Yeah. So in terms of networking, it's been a lot easier just to install with a single cable. I feel like anyone can do it. You, even your router at home, you can stick in some cables. And with a POV Plus switch, our controllers are all powered by POV Plus. The cameras are powered by POV Plus. Saving money on adapters, resources, so it's more Set green. Up times. Yeah. Set up times. Environmentally well. friendly. So it's, it's really, really powerful. Also things like the HR140, to me, is one of the best engineered products that we've also done. Outdoor integrated enclosures with wipers, IP65. Exactly. So being able to do that, and we've heard from, you know, whether it's a broadcaster or a rental company, having that ability just to plug and play is, is really, really beneficial. So it's some amazing innovations coming out of the factory. Great. So let's go on to sort of product launches then. So let's start with the HQ42. Can you tell us a bit about that? Yeah, HQ42 has uh, been doing really well. It's for those customers that have been, maybe they've used to the HE40, the HE38, right. which are more kind of an entry level size, but now they're looking to go up into the HD production workflow, but you know, at the, at the right price as well. Course, yeah. HD production, as we know, is still very much uh, being used in everyday scenarios and multiple applications. And the HE42 introduced the 3G SDI, so, and also Genlock, so multiple camera shows and rigs. Uh, it's great that we can do that. We also have fast switching firmware, which is showing here in the RP150. So you've got multiple cameras. It's a nice combination with something like the HE42 or the U150 to quickly select. So if people are really looking to step up in their production, the H42 would be perfect for that. Cool. And then we've got the uh, UE4, which is the first time we've, we've shown it at, at a show here, here at IBC. 
tell us a bit about that. Where's it? Obviously, the, the HQ2 was incredibly popular because it came as a, a small camera at a really nice, nice price point. So, yeah, tell us, tell us a bit about the feature set of that. Yeah, the HQ2 when it was discontinued was a, was a uproar yeah, in yeah, the market yeah. about what's the replacement going to be. So we took a long time listening to customers. We visited lots of different education corporates and studios, uh, you know, as they're used in radio. Uh, visual radio television applications yeah. and the UV4 has been designed now with 4K, pan and scan capability, four times magnification into the sensor. And the field of view is greatly improved as Yeah, 111 degrees, yeah. which is a big step up from its uh, 95 as well previously. So we're seeing a lot more POE as well, before the H2 couldn't do that. Still has microphones embedded in there. Uh, for stereo capture of the audio, and it can fit into multiple applications. So whether you are, again, education, corporate, but you're looking for really nice wide-angle views of studios where it's quite difficult to put them in, you place it in the corner and capture the content in really nice uh, 4K, 30p. It's amazing. Cool. And then finally we've got the RP60, which is the first time it's, it's been going. Can you tell us a bit about, about that? Yeah, the RP60, so the RP50 everyone again was uh, crying out when's the next version going to be coming out of that. Yeah. Listening to market feedback, much better joystick, more user buttons. We have a colour uh, display with more information on it. As you know, the RP50 we had uh, only two lines of information, but now we can really see what we want to map. So whether you want to see your ND filters or your shutter speed or how you can quickly coordinate it as an operator. We listened to those concerns and we've done that. And also made it POE Plus. So you don't have to have your AC adapter if you forgot it. If you've already got your POE Plus network switch, just plug it in like your cameras and away you go. And that runs 100 meters. So installation is really, really easy. And what about the camera grouping functionality? Can you tell us a bit about that as well? Yeah, the camera grouping is great because before it was a little bit fiddly with the pages. So, you know, having to navigate between page one and two with your five banks of cameras. Uh, now it's just on a dial. So you can just quickly jump between your different banks of cameras. So it makes it a lot easier and a lot more accessible uh, for those guys that are using them in more professional uh, situations in broadcast. Brilliant. Look, thanks so much for your time, Dean. Um, remember, if you've got any questions, please do uh, feel free to write them on the comments, and we'll see you soon. Yeah.